Good evening, everybody. That is absolutely the wrong screen. Dude. My name is Cameron. And I'm... my name is Anton. Is it really? No. No, I'm actually I was going to say, I feel like there are certain clearances that prevent us from telling the world that your name is indeed, or at least perhaps the last name. Dude, I, who's to say? Honestly, to say? honestly. I, my name is irrelevant. Name well, is irrelevant. Is... Anyway, this is name is irrelevant, and my name is Cameron, and I am currently on vacation. So as you may have noticed already, if you haven't, that this is this is not my house. This is not my desk. It isn't at all. And uh, currently, it's not the environment that you're very much used to. There are probably acoustics in the microphone that is making you think like, what the hell is going on? Where's the microphone at? Does he even have a microphone? I do. It's right here, and it's attached to a monkey wrench. Uh, and that's kind of how shit works around here. I don't know what you're Still. talking about. This is the, this is an ideal. You're setup. totally right. It's not even. It's not a microphone. It's, it's not even a monkey this wrench. Is, this it's is just, living the it's dream. Just wrench. This is this is perfection. If you are joining us for the comfort of your own home, you are more than welcome to grab a brewski, as I have grabbed for myself. I am attempting to enjoy the beauty of Blue Moon, a Belgian white, one of the Belgian white beers that have actually been one of the first ones to bring the style of the Belgian white beer back to the States of America, according to Chef O'Neill of Drexel University. If my information is wrong, his information is wrong, it's unfortunate, but that's just how it is, I guess. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's the only way to be. I don't know why you're trying to sound like a radio DJ, but I, I dig it. it. Like, you know, if we can all be radio this Disney is jockeys this is my style. at the same time, we, 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 we're just living our peak existence. This is and my style. I, your style is to be a radio disc jock? Hell yeah. Also, I just uncapped this beer with the force of just my two fingers. I had literally no idea. I thought I'd need a bottle opener for that. I've been opening them with bottle openers the past couple days. I just a... Oh, uh, anyway, topic of conversation <laughs> today. You didn't see... You didn't see... Wait, no, no, no. I didn't see Let, that. I didn't see it. Let, let, I didn't see it. Wait, before we start, like, like, valid. The first time you try it, valid. Like... I get it. Like it looks like a beer. You you try to twist it off. It's true. It's true. Like like you grab a button, fall off, whatever. Fucking has the shit where like you can clearly see that is meant to be twisted off. Okay, so bear with me for a moment. If you had a beer, a container, a glass container that you could be able to twist off, you will find that there are ridges on the inside of it, somewhere around the area that appears that if you were to apply a torsional force to it, a little bit of torque, yeah. that it would come right off. How do you know that, that those ridges are there until you take the cap off? Well, well here's the thing. Here's the thing. You've definitely had more than one of these before. I have. I have. Yeah, but like after the first one, but you should be able to tell. if you were new, if you were new to the scene. Now, I, I'm just saying, it looks it looks like what a Coke bottle looks like after you open it. Like, I, I mean, totally different. definitely would not be the first person to say that this does not look like a Coke bottle. I mean, clearly. So a Coke bottle, right? Um, has Coca-Cola brand on it. It's got sure, that sure, red sure. motif to it. Blue Moon has uh, the blue motif really going on there. Oh, 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 um, does it? Also, also it, there's a couple of other features about it. Like, you can't just use your eyes to identify whether it is a Blue Moon bottle or not. I, I'm just talking about the lid here. The, I'm, I'm talking oh, about the, the fact the fact so that, that from can, here to here... If, if you wouldn't mind me finding that bottle cap, which I believe was also blue, uh, it's somewhere... Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, it's right over here. It is blue world can see is very much blue uh a coca-cola bottle cap would be red or green you know what you what make a valid argument i'm, I'm clearly have you asshole. ever tried the coca-cola life it's the green one i have <laughs> You Has tried anybody the tried the Coca-Cola yes, Life? Yes, I actually, I was they, first... they sold it from like, what, 2008 to they, 2012? I feel like they, do they still sell it? Do they no, they definitely don't. To be fair, I have all right, not... All right, all right, if I Chad can prove me wrong. I have not seen the Coca-Cola Life recently. However, I was first enlightened to the Coca-Cola Life. Isn't it just Coca-Cola with like natural sugar? It's with stevia. It's with stevia. Oh, okay. That's, that's really it's, all. Okay, yeah, stevia? Yeah, 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 fair enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, everybody, I can see very obviously that my camera is flickering there. So if you will just give me just a quick very moment to attempt to fix that as best as possible. This is the first time I've done something like this with a new setup. Completely new. I literally just set it up a moment ago. So we're going to try to see if that's going to work. If I click the button, deactivate, reactivate, totally doesn't flash anymore. And if it keeps flashing, well, I'm going to deal with it just as much as you'll deal with it. Just as much as you'll deal with it. That's Will you bad. deal with it with me? I'll, I'll deal with it with you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we were just, we, you were just enlightening me about 
a podcast, YouTube podcast, I guess. Called well, Trash I mean, Talk I mean, it's 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 Trash Taste. It's not a YouTube okay, podcast. I'm sure many taste. of you are familiar with it. It's um, it's also on Spotify and probably Apple Music. Honestly, I'll admit, Spotify is a little too forward with me on the the, the podcast. I'll be perfectly honest on that. Dude, they I just open up. I open up Spotify and it's like, here's the next episode of your favorite podcast. I'm like, I don't listen to podcasts. And then the next day I'll come by and I'm like, here's a podcast you might be interested. There is no ob- there is no option anywhere for me to say, I am not really interested in podcasts, especially not the ones that you're recommending me. Usually there's like a dislike button and that, that'll work, but not, not on the podcast side of things. I think That's... your first mistake is that you're devaluing the how oh, much podcast oh no, no no i i'm not saying that podcasts like will not benefit me in some way shape or form just i personally am not actively listening to any particular podcast as of right now i used to listen to a podcast by this online like email newsletter uh the, the, the newsletter is morning brew and you'll recognize it by the coffee cup that they use as their logo and i used to li- i used to listen to their podcast as well which was i think i think originally called business casual and now they have another one that's called something completely different, which I've also seen on Spotify, and I have not listened to either of them very much recently. Well, it's have like, you tried? Have I tried? Have you tried? Yes. No. That would be a lie. Okay. That would be a lie. I have not. See, I see, know, this is I know not, that I can't. This is I not a lying stream. We are a truthing stream, if nothing else. What's your truth? What is my truth? What's that's, your truth? Uh, what's uh, My truth today is I went to the beach today. It was a lovely sure. time. I've been on vacation. It's lovely. I have not streamed. I did not stream on Wednesday. Gosh, oh, no. But I usually oh, no. stream on Wednesdays. Oh, and well. And I, I mean... did not stream on Friday, although today is Friday. So, so you did stream on Friday. I did. I you did. did stream on Friday. I did. That is your truth. That is my truth. Ow, it fucking rings hurt, dog. That's the problem with high-fiving people or fist-bumping people with this particular fist is the fact that I, I will hurt people, and I know that I will hurt people. So I, I mean, I, I, I to be first fair, to be in fair. order to complete the motion. To be fair, I was insisting on a fist. You were insisting on a fisting? No. As we all wind up doing at some point in our life, I feel like I, the last time I insisted on a fisted. Well, let's not talk about that. That's confidential. It's confidential. That's confidential. That is between a man and his fiance. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. I don't think my fiance really wants to get into the details of theirs, unless unless there is a particular fiance out there in the crowd right now who would like to talk about. Anyway, new topic. Um, so we were talking about Amazon Prime shows. Oh yes, for sure. So, I mean, I feel like I feel like everybody's hopping on to the Amazon Prime TV show Shane with like the fucking Invincible show, which, by the way, incredible. We've both seen it. it thought it was great, right? Incredibles is a Disney show. Please. In- <laughs> anyway, Invincible <laughs> is an incredible. It is an incredible, incredible. It's not so incredible as Disney show. It's not Disney. It's Amazon. Dude, I, I like. I like who who actually much. who plays who plays Mark Grayson? Um, I forget. I don't know what off the top of my head. However, I, have I know seen... Sandra O oh plays his mother and J.K. Simmons plays his dad. Um, Mister Mister. No no no. J.K. Simmons. Space. Yeah, and then Mark Mark Hamill actually plays Think the Mark. Um, fucking uh, the dresser. Or the fucking the guy that the makes guy the in costumes. the yeah. I, the I, I thought I heard the, that. Yeah, yeah, it's Mark Hamill. Um, do not know who actually plays the guy, which is really funny. I know everybody else. Uh, da, 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 da. It's definitely not Yuichi Nakamura. Uh, that, uh, uh, it showed me for a hot moment. Google gave me that little Mark Grayson voice actor. Yes, please tell me. Yes, yes. Stephen Ewan. Yeah, yeah. Ewan? Stephen Ewan. Ewan. Um, Ewan. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was it was just a good show. Like I don't. It was it was very well written and like super well animated. Like just like absolutely beyond what Amazon. i like i'm really happy that i managed to get to the invincible train before i saw the memes that came out oh oh the think mark thing yes amazing yes. i saw that one i think right before i had watched the penultimate episode and that uh, was when i was like oh my god i already know this this is great i want to know exactly what these memes are all about and i finally like i had not I didn't have to worry about spoilers at that point because I had already seen pretty much all of it at that point, I well, think. Aside I mean, you like hadn't seen what it was spoiling. Exactly, exactly. What, For those of you that don't know what we're spoiling, don't look it up. Watch the show. It'll be great. You'll enjoy yourself. It's like, 
four to eight hours of your life, depending on how quickly. I don't have going. a spoiler alert button. However, this is your message. Spoiler alert. We're yes. talking about Invincible, star, uh, starring my, uh, Mark Grayson in, at the Amazon Prime show. Stephen Ewan? Stephen Ewan. Well, as Mark Grayson. Well, starring Stephen Ewan as Mark Grayson in the Amazon Prime hit show, Invincible, which I very much enjoyed that. I like, I had a hard time convincing myself that I should like the show. And this is, this is why I say that. I have seen way too much from my particular friend group about how like the superhero genre is overdone, it's oversaturated, that every single superhero show that comes to the, that, that kind of comes to the forefront is just a redone or some reversion of something that came before it. And I, for one, did not think that Invincible was anything like I had seen it before, but I don't know if that's whether because I'm just really easily at being fooled or whether it was actually like this independent show that was done so differently than everything come to pass. I feel like the closest thing that I can, the closest thing that I could relate to Invincible was The Boys, which is also an Amazon original, which basically also kind of hits the trope of like, oh, the super powerful guy may or may not be like the actual enemy in the show, which I guess spoilers for both of them, but like that's, that's the only parallel I could draw from them. It's like superheroes as if they weren't these high and mighty like heroes. They were not exactly heroes. So what I'm hearing is that you really hate the mainstream comics, which come from Marvel and DC, and which kind of have been oversaturated, especially in popular media recently. But what you really want to see more of is what Amazon has been doing recently and just popularizing image comics and dark horse comics, which are independent comic book creators, which have kind of within recent years and within like the last 15, 20 years, been able to produce their own comic books and been able to really break into the mainstream. And it's by supporting creators like them that we're really able to get a different voice and an actual commentary on the interesting comics and like the tropes that we have come to like understand as like kind of mainstream. And that's, that's really what these shows do really well. Mm -hmm. It's because like Invincible is a commentary on like that old Superman trope, like Mark's dad, Again, huge spoiler alert. Like, if you haven't seen spoiler the Spoiler alert! Invincible. If you haven't seen the show, if you don't know anything about it, gonna be spoiled. Sorry. Fucking, I have no filter. I've read the whole thing. Like, sorry, not upsetting. sorry. We're talking, we're talking spoiler alerts. Um, but yeah, basically, it, like, just goes into and it talks about how potentially, like, the original, like, Superman or, like, the idea of the Superman is just, like, not something that we really should look forward to and it like it kind of deconstructs it and subverts the expectations and really so again the show hasn't really gotten into this yet but it like even shows that even in his defeat it's just like how he could overcome that and overcome that image that society has of him and become better for it and that's something that's really important because like Again, when we find that media is getting stale by supporting independent creators, it's it's that's that's how we like bring new life into it. Because like I'm sure that you're kind of sick of it. Like just like even with from what I've heard, I have not seen the new Marvel movie, uh, Black Widow. But like it's just the I same to be fair. It's the same fucking quippy shit that we've seen from Marvel like ten or fifteen times. And the reason they keep making it is because we keep giving money to them. Like it's until we as a consumer are able to tell them that I want something that's a I little bit more intelligent. I want something that is totally different. I want something that isn't just the same old trope, just kind of rebranded for whatever hero that we have on the banner this time around. Yeah, exactly. And like, like fucking, I don't know. I mean, I know, I know, like, I feel like from what I've been told so far, the, the, uh, the Disney Plus show Loki kind of does an okay job of doing something a little bit different. I am not personally caught up. I'm pretty oh, sure it, just, it literally not. just definitely, doesn't. Definitely, definitely, definitely doesn't. Like, definitely like, does not. No, no, not even. Like, the closest okay. Disney has come to going away from, like, their fucking mainstream would be WandaVision, and they didn't really stick the landing on I mean, I mean, with WandaVision, I feel like the thing that pushed it differently the most was the, the like, the rather unconventional, like, not very linear type of storytelling, where it's not like you hit the first episode and you have, like, some very very clear idea of where the next episode is going right afterwards at least with the first like three episodes of it and a by the don't get me wrong by the third episode you kind of got what the pattern is and as soon as you got what the pattern was which was kind of like just 
skipping through different types of like timelines of or not timelines uh, it, times it's like of going like through television. her like mental state where she's di- trying to cope with like tragedy by, yeah like, going but a- but after that yeah. i feel like absolutely just kind of fell back into the same thing as it was with all the other well Marvel well again again like i that. feel like i feel like through the middle of it it still did a pretty decent job like it it, it really went into her character like how she was dealing with her tragedy of like, mm-hmm. losing her family and losing vision and all of that stuff and like she was trying to cope with it and like there was all of this um newer stuff that that was going on absolutely but like the end of it the end of it especially like ended up like fucking just going back to the same shit it was like what a fucking large cgi boss fight and you were just it, like it really was which uh you know i feel like that kind of it's it's good in a way disney queen's popping in here and saying that the new newer marvel is pulling together stuff to kind of go beyond the front guys since the first generation of heroes are mostly dead phase four is supposed to develop a bit is strange i know absolutely nothing about the marvel i think it's eternals that's coming out recently yeah, supposed yeah. To like really tie in the newest phase four of things trying to move through newer things while also staying close to the comics not that complete it's, it's actually i'm happy that you know you're kind of here to talk on that because you yeah. know more about the comics than i literally would ever know about. yeah no i've spent too much of my fucking time reading comics i literally i, I literally remember in the middle of my multivariate calculus let's class, not worry about it let's i not. just like just turning over and being like what's this guy doing over this guy like literally never met he's just like looking at marvel comics online or i don't remember what comic you were looking at in particular oh it might have been say? a superman thing or it, a batman it, i don't really know probably. anyway uh, anyway who's the fuck eternals what did, what do you know about that? Um, Being more knowledgeable than I am on the topic. I mean, the Eternals is like a really interesting comic that they're producing in general because it's like similar to Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's like not terribly popular of a comic book itself or a comic property, and they're just like, you know what? Fuck it, fuck it. We're just gonna do this, and you're gonna watch it, and I am and you're gonna s- like it because we've slapped the Marvel name on Dude, it. Dude, really? And you're gonna you're, you're gonna have to be like, okay. I'm into it because it's Marvel, but also because you already have that, like, I feel like that knocks out of the way that initial, like, I'm not going to pick this up because I don't recognize it. It's Marvel. You do recognize it. So now that you've picked it up and started reading it, you will be able to, like, understand or be, um, be thrust into this new way of thinking that is brought about by the Eternals, if I'm to assume it correctly all right so we have a comment talking about like what the eternals actually are plant Uh, beings or something so planet beings no no not entirely correct so um the eternals to to get more technical not that it really matters for any reason at all um basically the whole backstory behind the eternals is that millions of years ago these the species called engineers came to the earth and they created two different races they were the Deviants and the Eternals. I guess the Mutants and... Oh, no. Never no, mind. Deviants? Oh, okay. okay. Go on. No, no. Yeah, yeah. So, um, basically, um, they messed with, like, normal human mutation. They created the Eternals and the Deviants. And the Deviants were a race that lived underground and were just, like, all sorts of fucked up. And they had, like, really short lifespans were, but were able to reproduce super quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Eternals, however had super long lifespans and like were like these perfected Hence being the eternals right right, 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 right. Um, they've like been around since like before like they're they're like thousands of years old like casually understand um hence being the eternals they are eternal, they are eternal. Um, and it's very difficult for them to reproduce there's only been like one eternal child in all of the comics history for whatever reason um and yeah like it's it's somewhat interesting but also just kind of like this it's this very old like 80s like silver age of comics idea where it's just like kind of these perfect like heroes where they don't really deal with anything and they did they did a recent reboot but it like died immediately because they tried to make them way too edgy did they really try to do like an eternals thing um they tried to do an eternal reboot in like i think it was 2015 or 2016 and it like died after 20 or 30 issues just because like not a lot of people Oh, like in the in, in the, the comics, comics. In the comics. comics. Okay. In the comics. When I are, say, yeah. Are those are, are the part of the are the reboots like a part of like the new canon they're trying to push forth, or oh are they kind God. of like Don't attending a reboot? Trying to trying to thing? understand the whole canon of Marvel and DC right now is its own fucking science. Think, like, as a person who doesn't know about the comics like exclusively, I gotta wonder like if I pick up a random Marvel comic from the comic book store tomorrow, do I know for a fact that I'm actually going to start reading something that is a part of the canon? 
I mean, or... if you read something that's new, in theory, it should probably be part of the canon. How long it stays part of the canon is a whole different question. Mm. Um, I know I, that was a thing that kind of became a hot topic during when the Star Wars, the, like the new Star Wars trilogy was coming up, where they were saying, "Oh, how, oh like, I think the he, older, pretty much they had retconned almost everything that came before that wasn't like an official Disney release." Yeah, yeah. So, so Star Wars, you're talking about Star Wars Legacy, um, and they they canceled that. Also, apparently, they've recently canceled the whole sequel trilogy too. They're like, "Yeah, that's." Oh, really? Yeah, with, oh. like, the... Because, like, it wasn't terribly... Like, it was kind of successful. Mm. But also, like, the new, like, fucking Disney XD shows. Um, at, or not Disney XD. Uh, fucking Disney Plus. Like, uh, Disney yeah, XD. Yeah. Great, great program. Would Disney XD, great. Uh, I heard Bad Batch <laughs> on Disney Plus. Yeah, is Disney very, Plus. Very choice. Disney, Disney Plus has been, like, producing a lot of really, like, profitable content for mm -hmm. Disney. And they're just like, yeah, this doesn't really fit with, like, the sequel trilogy. So... That that's canceled. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't know. Disney makes its own rules. Let's not worry about it. I mean, I imagine so. Like you own the intellectual property, so you guess you you kind of get the opportunity yeah, to make the yeah. They Holy. they own the intellectual property. Holy. They own all the ways it's going to get distributed. Yeah. They can do whatever the fuck they want. We have no we have no input. Like I mean, I would hope at least like I mean, I feel like I feel this way more on the Star Wars sides of things, as in like the people who have been making all of the quasi canon content the last couple of years should have their say in where things go next and i mean i suppose there are plenty of people out there who are also doing the same thing with like marvel universe stuff however i don't know as much about it and i don't know exactly how much like i guess fan i don't want to call it fan fiction but like fan canon if i can even call if that's even a thing fanon is that a, is that a term where things kind of become what the fans are intending them to be. I like to think like- I mean, uh, so so that's, that's, that's like a really interesting point where like how much influence do fans have over content? And I feel like as we get into like larger, larger content and larger like companies buying like content, mm -hmm. it's like less fan input. Like, so with like Disney, it's just like less and less fan input because they're not really trying to appeal to you or me as fan mm -hmm. they're trying to appeal to fan on aggregate right right so like right. it doesn't it doesn't really fucking matter to them if we care like the more you try to appeal to an average person the less you actually appeal to the average person if that makes any sense right right we've got from disney queen that <laughs> disney buys things and then let the the original company do pretty much whatever they want within their standards. Some standards are a bit constricting. Disney has a ton of like fan canon, mainly for uh, their rides, the rides that they have in the Disney park. For example, the Haunted Mansion basically got rebuilt into how like, I guess the audience uh, interpreted the story to be. Um, I know like with like, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to think of something recently. I was literally listening to a song this morning by a band named AJR and one of their songs was specifically talking about the fact that does the art exists to the fullest extent that it was supposed to be originally when all it does was cater to what the people want as opposed to what the artist originally wants. So I feel like if you were making some like comic series or like uh, entertainment ride and it sticks to the narrative and runs with the original like idea of what I mean, it was originally designed with and that's a great great thing that's exactly what we want to see I, however what gets dollars what gets dollars is what portrays to the people who are consuming it which are the people who are like oh my god i love this content this is where i think it would go and i'm the one spending the money on it so if you push it in that direction i will spend more money on it which then i feel like diverts a lot from what the original intent of it Whatever it was, it diverts a lot farther from what the original idea, the crux of the piece of art or content or whatever it was may have been. Yeah, I mean, I guess it really gets into the argument, does authorial intent matter? And the, at the end of the day, it doesn't. Authorial intent means jack shit. Authorial intent as in like what like, the people like, like who, what what the, the people, people who are writing it like actually want you to do. It doesn't it doesn't fucking matter. Interpretation is everything. I'm trying to think, like, there are definitely a couple of pieces of media out there who, like, the end product was exactly what the artist has in, had intended it to be. But However, there's so many but, more that, but like... The, the, like, the user base, the people who were actually watching it were just like, this is a piece of shit, I don't like this. And I feel like, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I haven't looked too far into it, but I want to say, like, um, 
whatever the more recent, like the uh, the George Lucas thing that just came out, or didn't just came out, but the Dark Crystal or whatever with the puppets and stuff. From from what I had been been told, like that was something that George Lucas would really really wanted to bring to life, and now it with modern technology and like modern. Um, like, like he had the money to do so, was finally able to bring it to the screen. Oh no 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 no! no. It wasn't Mr. Uh, it wasn't Dark Crystal. It was Strange Magic, I think. Sure. There was a whole there was a whole like small documentary thing where he was just like, this is exactly what I wanted to do back when I was making Star Wars and stuff like that. I wanted to make something fantastical like this, and everyone was like, this is really weird. I don't like it. I don't I don't want to support this. But like. At least he had the opportunity, uh, farther down the line, to be able to kind of bring that to life. I guess Dark Crystal was, oh, Dark Crystal was Jim Henson to the Muppets in 1982. You're doing great, Chief. Thank you for the fact check, Dis fact check, Disney Queen. That's my fiance, by the way. Everybody knows it. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure she's the only viewer right now, but you know, doing God's work. Uh, 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 never sell yourself short. And who's watching? Who's watching? Pretty sure we know who's watching, and it's no, it's just definitely her. that's okay. That's perfect. We play to whatever audience is there to listen. Yeah, yeah. you know what? We are playing to the audience because we're she's the only one fucking asking questions. Anna so. knows that shit. She definitely does. Yeah, uh, what he true. wanted, Jim Henson wanted the world to see for puppets for adults, which was the Dark Crystal. That was the Dark Crystal. It was oh, puppets sure. for adults. Yeah. I mean, to be honest. Muppets could be a lot more edgy than it is right now. I mean, it is a lot of adult men shoving their hands up puppets ass. Which, I mean, as people would say about video games, it definitely appeals to the male fantasy. Uh, it really does appeal to the male fantasy. Honestly, an individual like myself, uh, all I really want to do is shove my hand up a piece of fabric and then make it, make it talk. And say the things that I myself could never have the guts to say. Muppet I'd rather have an an I'd rather character. have a anthropomorphic frog say all this thing about I don't know the government and stuff like Dude, that. Dude, wait, wait, wait. Have you seen Killer Bean though? Killer Bean? Yes. Like Bean from the Muppets? No, 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 no. Like I Killer... thought there was a character named Bean from the Muppets. No. Oh my God. Okay. First of all, um, Killer Bean. Sound like, like Anna, the beans, the beans like like, like a bean, like a, like a literal anthropomorphic bean. Okay, so we're talking like like legume. Yes, yes, killer black legume. Bean, black bean, kidney bean. Okay, it Lime is bean. it is a stop motion bean bean. fucking. Um, I'll, I'll show this to you later. Killer bean. Um, yes, yes, yes. It is a stop motion movie about a bean that is a ninja. All right. And oh, it yeah. is like just by this one creator, and like it took him like apparently like twelve years to make. And it is like an hour long movie, and it is the most amazing fucking thing. It was like made in like 2008 or 2009, mm -hmm. and it is just so high quality, you would not believe it. Like, I, I don't like, know how he did this. I, I hope, I definitely want to check that out at some point. Because, like, I feel something like that absolutely goes unnoticed in today's standard no it's like, it's not even unnoticed it's like like one of those cult classic shits but like you know classic. not 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 a lot yeah cult classic cult you, know, classic you gotta like love the cult classic it's a little it's a little esoteric it appears it appeals to the right audience and the right audience already knows about it it's true but the mainstream the mainstream has to wise up to stuff like that the killer bean check out the killer bean yeah I will be check checking out, out the killer check, bean check out killer bean check um, out killer bean more of a story disney cancer Amazon, great. Um, Jeff you know Bezos really, can you know stick really his hand ironic? up your ass. You know that's really ironic. Right after we started the stream, I had like I, I'm attempting to look for employment options. By the way, if you need help with your employment at all, I do technical stuff. I do programming. I do idea work. I'll give you ideas. Anyway, so the school facilitated uh, business thing. We're finding jobs. Is an app called Handshake and yeah. Amazon. Decided to message me. Oh, very oh. soon after we began. We are a hundred percent sponsored by talking, Amazon. We are absolutely we are not hundred uh, percent sponsored by Amazon. Jeff we Bezos, are, give me your dad money. We are money. in fact sponsored by Salami, the brand of meat. It's not a brand. It's just a type of meat. We are back on good terms. It's okay. Salami absolutely wants this C, and by this C, the C stands for for, for Cam. No, it stands for my name, Cameron. No, no. No. Anyway, thank you for our forever sponsor, Salami. We're back together again. It's great. But I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> Amazon decides to message me about a potential. Dude, I'm telling, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Jeff you know, Bezos honestly, is is. He's watching. There's an Amazon Alexa device somewhere in the room downstairs, and it was just like I hear somebody mentioning. You're not my wrong. Thing. That's oh, yeah. 
Yeah? You're really There's not wrong. There. There's an Amazon yeah. Alexa advice directly below us right I believe now. it. Because I my neighbor it. uses Amazon Alexa. Also, never let Amazon into your home. Do not buy Amazon Alexa. Do not trust Amazon. Do not trust Jeff Bezos. This is a bad time to say that I have an Amazon Fire Stick in my own apartment and use it pretty much all the time. Also, I think while Amazon having my Fire Google, Sticks are amazing. My Google Home listening to everything. You can that definitely I say. crack that. <laughs> So uh, I'm curious. So I'm, I I want to know exactly what uh, what Amazon is attempting to tell me. So they're saying uh, they're asking me. Uh, there's like, For people who invent, there's no better place to explore than Amazon. And you've all of a sudden got me incredibly disinterested in your service, yeah. Amazon. If you're listening, because obviously you are, why would you have why why would you have sent me that message? Dude, you know what's amazing? That Comcast keeps asking me to send back the flash. They're even offering me a ten dollar Amazon gift card. Seriously? Point. Yeah, they're really? offering me a ten dollar well, gift card. Well, don't, don't don't worry about Comcast. Dude, Comcast. I'm not sending it back. I refuse. I, on I will say, I will say, Comcast was a wonderful company to work for. I've heard because I've seen the papers about the benefits that they will give that their employees and it's a wonderful place to grow and there's a great networking opportunity and shit like that. But when your manager decides to ghost you because like they don't have enough budget in the team and that means obviously that they can't, he can't answer your emails, that's when I say, in addition to the shitty customer service that they already had, I'm like, all right, Comcast, whatever, buddy. I don't, I don't Are care. Are we still only at one viewer right now? What? No, we're like two. Oh, oh, wow, wow. Who's the second viewer? Me. Maybe. <laughs> you. You're the second viewer out there. Oh, thank you, viewer. I don't is, know, it, yeah. is, is, is it really? I have no idea. I have no way of determining this. Only my special mods can determine who's watching right now. And the only person that I know of that is mod on this channel is the dearest Disney queen herself. How's it going, dear? You good? Wait, I'm sure you're all right. Wait, can't you? Aren't shouldn't you be able to tell just off like your HUD and stuff? Or? Nah, I don't get to see that stuff. It's only through mods. Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? Talk what? about shit what? over here. That's great. That's great. Doesn't show up. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's fine. It's fine by me. Honestly, I usually use these streams as an opportunity just to chat. It's only dude, I'm one. I'm just using it Whatever. to be an attention ho. Like, and clearly dude, it's not dude, working. It's a, dude, you can be an attention. No, just get like, just like scooching a little closer to the camera. Right, like, let's get real. We get like real, real close we can, to the camera. We can get See, real now sexy. we're just like this. And now, if we look at the camera instead of yourself, you can look at your camera. And then and I'm so sexy. I'm so, so real sexy. Oh yeah, sexy. Let's, let's, let's get real. Into Tell it. me more about Marvel's Invincible. I said Marvel's Invincible. You Amazon's Invincible. <laughs> yeah, Amazon's Invincible. I enjoyed um, WandaVision. I think so. I think I WandaVision it. would be an interesting first step if they developed the rest of the universe based off like similar premises where they kind of gave independent creators an opportunity to really do what they were good at. So you you keep mentioning independent creators, right? And does that is that implying that like for example like like um, WandaVision or I think if I'm correct in saying WandaVision, the concept of it was based off a comic called like uh, um, was it Mansion of M House, House of, of M House of M. House of M and was that written by Stan? Or was that somebody more independent within the Marvel Universe? Or right, in Marvel, right, I guess, right. let's, writing let's, universe. So let's clear up a couple things. Okay, let's clear it up. Um, Stanley? Yes. Created a lot of characters. 100%. Um, did not write most of the comics that we think of nowadays. Um, Interesting. In fact, it could be argued he barely wrote the comics that like are actually associated with him. Um, so... Jack Kirby was the artist that actually drew most of the comics back in the day, and he's associated with many of the writing credits, and he's like actually gone on record saying the fact that Stanley would kind of give him just like blank scripts, and he'd have to kind of just fill in the gaps with it, with like his writing, and like that's, that's just an interesting thing. Stanley was more of like a marketing guy for Marvel, and that's that he like really brought it into like the next age and made sure that it didn't fail as a company. Potentially not the best writer. Um, House of M, I, I'm not actually sure who was written by, but it is one of the most pivotal X-Men stories and it has absolutely, like, it has a little bit to do with WandaVision in the fact that it follows after Vision died and mm -hmm. Wanda changed the world to kind based of fit her on own her. idea. And that's about where it ended. Um, so WandaVision, so WandaVision, like, I don't know if you've seen it. I'm not going to ruin it. Great show. Go check it out. Um, 
The House of M, however, was based off when Vision died and Wanda said no more mutants. And so she destroyed all the mutants, fundamentally changed the world into um, her own image where like, it was weird, but like mutants lit, ruled the world, but also weren't being created. Very strange time. Interesting. So like this idea of like the House of M is fitting within that that idea that WandaVision brings up where like Wanda Maximoff can change reality to, to yes, whatever she 100%, wants it to be. 100%. She can absolutely change reality to be whatever she wants it to be. And I feel like they bring it up in the show not only as kind of stating it outright, that can, she can change that to be yeah. whatever the hell she wants it to be. Like uh, hella like throws in an entire person and changes them on the molecular level, which convinces a person like myself, like uh, allows the suspension of disbelief to exist for such a, like, such a uh, small enough moment for me to be like, I mean, she has fucking children like, yeah. with a synthesoid. This is true. This like, is true. like, that's all you need. This is, this is true as well. And the House of M, I guess, kind of takes that, I, I guess, I guess it really takes that idea of Wanda Maximoff can change the world to be whatever the hell she wants it to be add you know dot 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 that's kind of what that that comic kind of goes into which i guess yeah. the vision sort of touches upon they, yeah, they say I like mean, she can she change does. whatever she wants it to but again in the comics um wanda maximoff is a character that's been established for like 40 or 50 years and has a super deep comic history versus like you know she's just an edgy fucking as in, in like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, yeah, where she Marvel was like brought up during one of the universe. Avengers movies. She's like, she's like, she's like an edgy uh, cunt in a fucking uh, red dress at this point. Like mm -hmm. nobody really knows what the fuck she's about until WandaVision, which again, great show, hundred percent would recommend. Mm -hmm. Not gonna spoil it just because it's so good. I feel like that's like something I really wish I could get into a bit more. Is that there's apparently so much more history with these comics themselves because they've been existing for I mean, many, many, many years now. I feel like now. it's so difficult to get into the comics too just because like it's such a huge commitment it's not like it's there's not, a lot of volumes to get through it's not even that it's just like there's a lot of volumes to get through not all of them fit the same way that you think they would mm -hmm. and you just you just end up like just lost and it's fucked you yeah. fucked i mean like if you were to start Let's say, if you hypothetically started at the beginning of all Marvel comics and started at volume one and started going chronologically, would things work out? Is it all still canon? Are there plot No! Twists? No, it wouldn't. Assume. There wouldn't be. First of all, if you started with issue number one of Marvel, you wouldn't start with Marvel because Marvel was bought by somebody else. Like, like... Um. Like, you'd start with a completely different... I forget what the name of the company is. Um, but you'd start with a fully different comic company, which was bought by somebody else, which was bought by somebody else, that eventually turned into Marvel. Okay. And, like, also, canon is just, like, such a weird term, because every every author has, like, different intentions with all of the characters mm -hmm. that they write about, because obviously they want to put their own spin on the character. Just because the, one, of the, one of the original creators says, this is what I intended, this is where I intended things to go. Doesn't well, that's the, the next thing. creator is going to agree in the same exact What's way. What's an original creator? Yeah, I guess, if unless there is absolutely only one person who created a particular comic issue... Right. There is no so, one so, original so creator. One, one person does create an, a, a, an original comic issue, but like like writes it, but like then there are different artists, and then there are different colors, and there are different pencilers, and there are mm -hmm. different stencilers. And like, You've got aspects here from like color theory and illustration theory and straight up literally in every that, English class ever. Even, even on top of that, it's that one iteration of that character. Because like every, every time a writer takes over and like makes it a new character then they're they're a totally new character because like it's fully different intentions mm -hmm. like when they fucking i don't know look at the fucking ultimate universe in marvel i don't know how much y'all know about that but basically it was just like a uh, excuse for writers to just do whatever the fuck they wanted with like fucking old timey marvel characters and just like have no repercussions mm -hmm. and essentially they made fucking wanda and pietro incest twins Oh, with the ultimates? Yeah, yeah. Like, Interesting. Like, they made them incest. Spicy. It was fucking spicy. In, in the nothing, worst possible ways. In the worst possible ways. 
So yeah, like fucking. So what you're telling us is we should really meet your Yeah, Marvel yeah, everybody should, be everybody, should be everybody should. Everybody should do it. No, no, no. Everybody should read Marvel Ultimates. Nobody should be. No, it. yeah, but, yeah. You should. You but, should only should read. The ultimate comics. You almost broke your own rule. I know, I almost broke my own rule. But you're saying that everybody should see what it is and then be like, I should never do that myself. That's bad. If That's bad. if you have never read That's any bad. Marvel comics and you decide the first comic you read are the ultimate comics and the ultimate universe, then you should be mistaken. It is very different. The is there an thing. ultimate Spider-Man? There is an ultimate Spider-Man. Is there an ultimate Spider-Man? Yes. Uh, okay. Is first there story. also featured incest in the ultimate Spider-Man? Don't tell me. I don't want to know. It'd be too much spoiler for everybody else. Oh, you yeah. bitch. Somehow, somehow. You then broke my rule. Somehow I did. Somehow I did. It was amazing. Uh, no, but Spider-Man does die in the Ultimate Spider-Man. Comes to that. Peter Parker does die. That's how Miles Morales. That's how Miles comes about, right? Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I mean, I feel like that's, that's how it has to be. Yeah, it, it does. That's it how it has to be. But then it turns out that Peter Parker is also immortal. It's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, that is how we're going to leave all of y'all. Peter Parker is immortal. There are no rules. And just accept that death is never going to come for you. If you haven't already um, subscribed to the world of Jeffrey Bezos and the Amazon conglomerate, oh, yeah, obviously, you should please do that like and now. subscribe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to the world of Amazon um, and the conglomerate. Follow That's pretty his much all. Instagram. It's Cameron with an I don't, X. I don't have an Instagram that's public here, at least uh, from what I can tell. It's a, it's just, it's a cosplay Instagram. If you're really into that stuff, you may. I'm on vacation right now. I really don't care. Um, if you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you're already in the right place. Uh, we always appreciate that. I uh, don't join our Discord server. There it's... is a Discord server. That's Anton's trying to hype things up and whatnot. We talked about Spider Man today, dude. If you haven't watched, no, honestly, serious recommendation. If you haven't watched Spider Man Into the Spider Verse, I feel like you should watch oh, that 100%. right now. If you also, haven't watched Invincible like... by Amazon Prime, I'm not even kidding. Like, if you haven't watched it and you're just like, oh, I can't get the Amazon Prime descriptions, subscription so that I can watch it, like, fucking, no, I'm serious. Join the Discord server. I will give you the login credentials and you can watch Invincible because you really, really should. You should watch Invincible. You should also watch The Boys. And although we really didn't talk about it, dude, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is a wonderful 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 show it's it's great it anyway, shows you how a, a tiny jewish woman is the best woman in your life and how they will run your life and that will be amazing if you don't already have a tiny jewish woman in your life you should get one if you don't like, if you don't agree with that then like you're just you're just wrong anyway that's that's really all i got for now thank you all so much for watching uh, uh i would maybe join we'll be back tomorrow maybe you won't be potentially luck, it fun. really depends on what time my parents pick me up they're gonna help me <laughs> It's wonderful. Anyway, uh, my name is Cameron. Uh, I was joined by my buddy Anton over here. He's he's awesome. I'm awesome. I'm on vacation. Anyway, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. If it's day, we're in whatever time zone that you're in. If you're having uh, a lovely evening in whatever time zone you're in, I hope you have, have a wonderful rest of your night, day, afternoon, dawn, twilight, whatever. I see question marks in that chat over there. Don't question things. Have a wonderful day. I love you all. Peace out, my friends. Bye-bye.